Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and it's time for the weekly pop culture wrap up. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is the weekly pop culture wrap up. It's the show where I go over the week's pop culture news, mostly comic books and movies. And I want to talk real quick about this Elvira Mistress of the Dark Classic Years Omnibus that's being crowdfunded right now on Indiegogo from our friends at Dynamite. Now, you know, I'm a huge Elvira fan and I'm loving the new comics that Dynamite is producing. However, there were comics from back in the days from the 90s that I've never been able to get into. Well, Dynamite's already crowdfunded a Volume 1 Classic Years Omnibus and now they're doing a Volume 2. So you can check it out right now at the link in the description below and you can also get some really cool variant covers, some photo covers, some metal covers, some CGC type stuff, or just get the Omnibus if you want it. And if you missed out on Volume 1, that's available as well. So check it out. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, Classic Years Collection, Volume 2. And for real though, y'all, our friends at Dynamite sent me a copy of the Volume 1 hardcover omnibus of that Elvira set. I looked through this. This is awesome. These are Elvira comics from the 90s. I've never had access to these. I've never been able to read these. It includes work from Kurt Busiek, from Paul Dini, from Dave Cockrum, from Fred Hembeck. This is a really awesome collection. Thank you so much to our friends at Dynamite for sending this, and we will definitely be getting Volume 2. Now it's on to the wrap-up, a lot of comic book news, so get your notepads ready. Here we go. We got the new Golden Age, which is a one-shot comic debuting in November from DC Comics. It's written by Jeff Johns with artwork by Steve Lieber, Jerry Ordway, and some others. This is a one-shot comic book celebrating the Golden Age of DC Comics while presenting a new mystery that's going to be developing over a few Jeff Johns-led series at DC. Now, from the solicitation, it seems like some of this stuff is spinning out of some of the reveals from Flashpoint Beyond, so it definitely felt like Flashpoint Beyond was setting up something to go beyond Flashpoint Beyond, so Flashpoint Beyond Beyond. Anyway, it all kicks off here with the new Golden Age, which is a one-shot comic. That is also followed in November by a new Justice Society of America series written by Jeff Johns with artwork by Mikhail Hanen. Now this was the supposed, ah, I think this was supposed to be the book that Brian Hitch was going to be doing with him. Plans changed, but now it seems like things at DC are realigning back with wanting Jeff Johns back to do some things including bringing back the Justice Society. They just fully came back in the pages of Dark Crisis. This is all set up for this Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns had such an amazing job, uh, or did such an amazing job when he did JSA back in the day. I never even cared about JSA characters, but that run really pulled me in, so I'm excited to see what he can do. And we're also going to see an attempt how many times we can say Jeff Johns tonight because the next book is Star Girl Lost Children six issue series debuting in November from Jeff Johns and Todd Nock. Todd Nock of course was the artist on Young Justice back in the day. He's been doing a lot of work in recent years so it's cool to see this team up this pairing. So we've got Jeff Johns doing a Golden Age one shot to kick off a new mystery spinning out of some of the stuff from Flashpoint Beyond including the return of the Justice Society of America in an ongoing series and a Stargirl Lost Children six-issue series where it's Red Arrow, I believe, and Stargirl find, trying to solve some mystery about some missing gold. It's all connected. It's all connected. Anyway, then we got Wildcats debuting a new ongoing series in November as well. This is written by Matthew Rosenberg with artwork by Steven Sokovia. Uh, Rosenberg had already been kind of setting this stuff up in the pages of Batman Urban Legends. If y'all remember, there was that Grifter story that was in those first six issues that had Zealot in it and all that kind of stuff. And I was super primed and ready for Wildcats to come back and then nothing just crickets, just chirps. But here we are, the 30th anniversary of Image, the 30th anniversary of Wildcats, the 30th anniversary of Wildstorm, and we're getting a Wildcats series from Matthew Rosenberg. I'm super pumped for that. We're also getting Waller vs. Wildstorm, which is a DC Black Label four-issue series. This all stuff's all this stuff is in November. Um, it's written by Spencer Ackerman and uh, Evan Narcisse with artwork by Eric Battle. 
Eric Battle, I haven't thought of Eric Battle in a long time. Aquaman stuff I remember in particular back in the day, but lots of cool 90s comics from Eric Battle. This one is characters from Wildstorm, mostly involving Stormwatch, what I can piece from the solicitations, kind of coming into conflict with a young and up-and-coming intelligence officer, Amanda Waller. So take Amanda Waller and spin it into that, that that kind of covert operations spy thriller kind of thing that Wildstorm always attempted to combine with superheroes. So that could be cool. Definitely something to kind of pay attention and keep an eye out for. Then we've got Batman and Joker Deadly Duo. This is a seven issue series starting in November that puts Batman and Joker on the same team together. Gordon's been kidnapped. Harley's been kidnapped. Gordon and, or my bad, now Batman and Joker have to team up to save their respective friends or whatever you want to call them. But it's written and illustrated by Mark Silvestri. Mark Silvestri allegedly doing all seven issues of this writing and illustrating. I am a Mark Silvestri fan. I'm excited to see this. We have not seen much Mark Silvestri like DC stuff. So this couldn't be cool. This could be interesting. The premise... A Joker teaming up with Batman, okay, all that say that seems silly, it's whatever, it could be fun, could have potential, but Mark Silvestri doing the artwork, I'm really pumped for that. Then we've got Fantastic Four launching with a new number one, this is going to be in November, it is written by Ryan North, with artwork by Yvonne Coelho, now, what, at San Diego or, or something like that, they shared this, this teaser where it was like a compass, so people were thinking it was Ryan North, and that was true, but the, the artist is somebody different, um, and it's not necessarily that they're moving to the West, but the focus is supposed to be on smaller, character-driven stories. Ryan North says that Dan Slott just did all this big, epic, cosmic stuff. He wants to take the direction a little bit different, a little bit smaller in scope and in scale, and focusing in on the characters. Now, the first few issues, he says, will focus on individual team members, like first issue is going to be about Ben and Alicia, second one about Reed and Sue, third one about Johnny, but he says the team will come together, and it will be character-driven, smaller, weird, quirky stories. Now, I'm always excited for an for a new writer on Fantastic Four. I, th I thought Dan Slott's run was decent enough. It kind of didn't fulfill its potential, I feel, towards the end, but it did have some really solid bits throughout. But I thought it was time for a new writer. Ryan North would not be my first pick, but hearing him describe what he wants to do, I am kind of eager to see what's going to happen. So there you go. Then we got Sabretooth and the Exiles. That's in November from Marvel 5 Issues. Written by Victor Lavelle with artwork by Leonard Kirk. This is a direct follow-up to the Sabretooth miniseries that already happened. Sabretooth was exiled from Krakoa into the No Zone, whatever you want to call it. He created his own version of Hell there and has connected all the exiled prisoners. And now this is their book. This is about them. So it's not an Exiles book where they're like traversing the multiverse or anything like that, like the former Exiles books, but it is literally like the Exiled from Krakoa. So there you go. If you liked that Sabretooth series, this is the next step. If you didn't like that Sabretooth series, you should probably skip this one. Then we got Cross Gen Tales, which is a one-shot comic coming in November from Marvel. Um, it's just a one-shot that reprints the first issues of a few Cross Gen titles, in particular Myst uh, Mystic, Ruse, Sigil, and Sojourn. Um, Cross Gen had some good books. They had some really solid books. They had some good uh, creators. Chim Chung, some of his early works there on the book Scion. I absolutely love that book. Greg Lan on Sojourn, on Sojourn was actually really good back in those days. Um, so they're only doing this because Disney now owns Cross Gen. They own the properties, but they have to like publish something every few years in order to show intent on maintaining the copyright or something like that. So that's all this is. How about just reprinting them? How about having like Ruse, the complete collection, put them out in trades. People would buy those. However, let me tell you something. If you really want to check out some of these stories, some of them are really good. Ruse and Scion, Crux, those are ones I would really recommend. The Path uh, is another one that I really, really, Route 666 was another really cool one. You can find these in dollar bins, quarter bins, really, really easy. So anyway, that cross gen tail is coming up. It's just reprint material. It's nothing new, but I would like to see something new. Also, from Image in November, we have I Hate Fairyland is returning with a new ongoing series written by Scotty Young still, but art this time is done by Brett Bean. Um, I read I Hate Fairyland for a little bit when it first came out, but I kind of fell out of it. Um, but it was this fun kind of snarky, so, like 
a take on fairy tales or whatever, and then it's come back and it looks like the t uh, the main character has has grown up a little bit. Two Graves is the new one in November um, by Genevieve Valentine, uh, Ming Doyle, and Annie Wu. The the solicitation was rather cryptic. It said something about basically being like Death and the Maiden or something, but I. I couldn't pick out most from that. Then we have Gospel, which is a new five-issue series from Will Morris, writing, uh, writing and illustrating that one. Described as uh, like a tribute to Miyazaki, but set in the time of Henry VIII. So that could be interesting. Then we have Hell to Pay, which is a new Charles Soule book with artwork by Will Sliney. Now, Charles Soule's been really heating things up with 8 Billion Genies right now. So this could be something to watch out for because he could be on an uptick right now in, in creativity, right? Um, but this is described as Hellboy meets Indiana Jones. It's about this organization that you can join to get like magical abilities, but then they own you until you like pay off your magic loan, if you will. So it's about these two people, they're tied up into all of this their whole lives, and now they're exploring mystery or something, I don't know. Then we have Plush, which is a new book from Doug Wagner and uh, Daniel Hilliard. Now this is the third part of the Material Trilogy that Doug was talking about when we had him on the show just a few months ago. But this one, because this is the exact same team as Vinyl and Plastic, two really cool books that I would highly encourage anybody to check out. But Plush is about serial killing cannibalistic furries. That's everything I need to know. Frank Miller Presents finally solicited some books, so we got some hard details and some hard dates. Ronin Book 2 starts in November. It's going to be a six-issue series, just like the previous one. This is written by Frank Miller, laid out by Frank Miller, but Philip Tan is going to be working on the Frank Miller uh, layouts. Now, they just released a Frank Miller Presents Ashcan in comic shops. It's already kind of ticking up in price online, but before um, it went on the shelves, I got a chance to flip through it and look at it, and the artwork from Ronin Book 2 looks awesome. It is Philip Tan, but it's got that Miller design and style and storytelling sense, and I'm really, really pumped for that. Then we have Ancient Enemies, which is another six-issue series from Frank Miller Presents. Um, this one is by Dan DiDio and Danilo Beirut, and this one is about Earth being the battleground for two warring alien races and the byproduct of this has been superheroes, but the superheroes have started now choosing sides. So think of like the Kree Scroll War or something like that, but what if the Avengers had a civil war over the Kree Scroll War? Something like that. I don't know. I'm eager to check it out. Not as excited as I am for Ronin Book 2, but very excited for that. Quick Stops is a new one from Dark Horse Comics. Four issues. It's a viewers universe anthology written by Kevin Smith with artwork by Jeremy Sensor. It has been described as having uh, all kinds of short little stories from characters in the View Askew universe, um, black and white stories, references to Clerks and Mallrats and Chasing Amy and Dogma and all the other movies, and this could be really, really cool. Like, when Kevin Smith first started doing View Askew universe comics back in the 90s, like the Clerk series with Jim Mahfood or the Jay and Silent Bob series with Duncan Fregredo, I ate that shit up. I loved it. I, I adored it. And then when he was doing uh, Michael Avon Omen came in, they did the Blunt Man and Chronic. So I was into that kind of stuff. So I hope this kind of gives me that kind of feel and that kind of a vibe. Then we have a four issue series called The Ones debuting from Dark Horse in November, written by Brian Michael Bendis well, with the artwork by Jacob Edgar. I haven't really been liking a lot of Brian Michael Bendis' work in the last couple years, but this kind of sounds neat. The Ones is about how in every mythical tale, everybody who's ever been told that they were the one, the chosen one, right? The one. Every single one of the Ones have now been formed into a team to stop the one true one villain. Sounds dumb, but sounds really cool. Like, explaining it sounds dumb, but the concept sounds really cool to me. So I'm, I'm down for that. So I'm, I'm eager to check it out. Plus, just a four-issue series. Excited to see what Bendis is going to do with just a four-issue series. I think that could... I think that structure, that limitation in structure, could really, really benefit him. Then we have Behold Behemoth, a new one from Boom Studios in November by Tate Bromball and Nick Robles. I'm a big fan of Nick Robles' artwork, so I'm excited to check this one out. It's about a person who has dealing with a tragic past. Uh, I think they're a social worker or something. They come across this little girl. Later on, the little girl's found at the scene of a brutal murder. This dude's having crazy dreams. Turns out that maybe the, the entity in his dreams is real and trying to bring about the end of the world. 
Something like that seems cool. It's a new one from Boom, so you know we're going to be checking that out. Speaking of new ones from Boom and The End of the World, we have Once Upon a Time at The End of the World. We talked about this a little bit last week, a new Jason Aaron series. Now we know a lot more about it. It's got artwork by Alessandre Tefikinki. I messed that up so bad, but it's the artist from Good Asian. Um, but it's going to be a three-issue series. Each issue is exercise, I think like 30 pages or something. And it's about these two people who meet, and I'm getting the idea that they're like in love, and it's at the end of the world. It's post-apocalyptic. The end of the world's already happened. These two people are in love, but with everything they have to go through, it starts like pulling them apart. So it's supposed to be this big epic philosophical fantasy at the end of the world. I, I don't know. It sounds like it could be really cool. From Dynamite, we have Lord of the Jungle debuting in November, a new Tarzan series, this time written by Dan Jurgens with artwork by Benito Calego. I've never read any of Dynamite's Tarzan books. However, Tarzan was utilized in the latest issue or latest series of Dynamite Never Dies, and I thought that was cool. So Dan Jurgens, I'm excited to check it out. Also in November from Dynamite, we have Cherish. This is a series written by Katana Collins with artwork by Gabriel Caetano, and this is edited by our friend Joe Corallo, and it's based on a character that has been designed by Mark Silvestri. So that's really neat. I'm excited to see what this team's going to do. Katana Collins did a really great job on that Batman White Knight presents White, uh, White Queen, <laughs> Harley Quinn thing. I really, really liked that. So I'm excited to check this out and I got to support my buddy Joe. So for sure. Then we got Vampirilla versus Red Sonja debuting. I think this is spinning out of the Project Superpowers or the Superpowers Vampirilla Red Sonja books they did or something. I never read those. Seems like it's spinning out of that, but it's Vampirilla versus Red Sonja by Dan Abnett and Alessandro Rinaldi. Um, uh, so that's, that's pretty cool, right? I mean, Vampirilla versus Red Sonja, who's not going to buy that? And seriously, check out the Elvira um, Kickstarter right now, or Indiegogo, my bad. Check that out down in the description below because this book is super cool, and I cannot wait to see what's going to come. So that's what we got for you this week. What's coming up here at PCP? Well, the last Dylan's Horror Show before Horror Fest is tonight, and it's going to be all about Clyde Barker's Nightbreed, so you don't want to miss that. No Rock and Robbie Live or PCP Movie Night in the coming couple weeks. However, we are gearing up for a great Horror Fest, which kicks off over at Dylan's Horror Show on September 3rd with a look at Life. Life Force by Toby Hooper, and then on September 5th, we kick off with the Scream franchise over at PCP Movie Night. Horror Fest is going to be as horrifying as ever this year. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out the video. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and join us over at patreon.com slash PCP if you want to help support the channel. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Station, pop, pop, boom!